Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, my name is Sea Raptor, and it is time to get your affairs in order. Say your prayers and uninstall. That's right, the 8.0 apocalypse is upon us. Whether you read the official forums, Apes together, strong! Peruse Reddit, Wander through Facebook. Uh, no. Or check out Twitter. <laughs> it is clear that the end of World of Warships is here. The game is ruined. Wargaming has no idea what they're doing. Blah, blah, blah. We've been through all of this garbage before, haven't we? RPF was going to kill the game. Open water stealth firing, removal of open water stealth firing was going to kill the game. The massive Japanese torpedo destroyer nerfs back in the day were going to kill the game. Rubbish. Change is the nature of online games, whether it is new content or new mechanics. Now that's not to say that everything is hunky-dory. 8.0 has introduced, well, it's got its own share of problems, right? But if the overall intent of the patch, and... We can only assume that it is, given that we spent all this time investing. They spent all this time investing in, in the CBU work. If the overall intent is to drive up interest in carriers and boost that population in order to gather data on how to make the mechanics better and improve the class, well, from my perspective, mission accomplished. I mean, I think it's hard to argue with the fact that over the last, what, 48 hours or so since the patch has gone live, we've seen more carriers more regularly in more games than we have for probably the last six months, if not longer. For my part, I think the new I think the new CV gameplay is kind of fun, right? It has it has some things to recommend it. You have a lot of different options with the three different types of planes, the rockets, the torps, and the various kinds of dive bombers, which come in a couple of different flavors. The rockets I find very intuitive. I I, I find that those are probably the best thing to kind of pick up to start getting a handle on on how that all comes together, how to how to steer the planes and how to guide guide ordnance onto the target. Torpedoes take some practice. Every nation seems to have a different delay in terms of narrowing that torpedo co uh, cone, uh, the drop cone off your torpedo bomber. So it takes some time to learn how far out to start the run, and you know then you've got the the very obvious uh, arming distance there on your on your lead indicator. That's always nice. It's nice they put that in, right? And the dive bombers are the dive bombers are the tough part for me. They're they're, they're less intuitive. They're more challenging. You, it's very easy to lose sight of the, the reticle, knowing knowing when to click the button to try to drop. And it's even more complicated by the fact that they're a little different across nations, different types of bombs, HE or AP. And then everybody's reticle is a little different, right? Graf Zeppelin retains her perfectly circular one, whereas the Japanese ones tend to be somewhat elongated. Um, the, the new British ones, their quote-unquote level bombers, are very elongated. They have a, they have a completely different drop distance and, and and we'll talk about more of that in a minute but yeah dive bombers are a challenge there's a ton of nuances to take in between plane speeds a mechanics penetration values and all this new ordnance there is a ton going on in this patch i think it's going to take everybody myself included a while to kind of absorb it all uh right now we can't even display a lot of that information outside of the game uh, one of the things that i've uh, i've asked the Wargaming uh, Austin guys to, to reach out to St. Petersburg on is to get the wiki, um, the wiki format for carrier pages updated because right now you can't see any of this data outside of the game. The data exists. It's all right there in the game files, but we can't display it because there's so much of it in such a new format that the, all the carrier pages need, uh, need new scripts written so that we can do that. And we're not allowed to touch that stuff. Only the RU guys can mess with it. So I'll keep you guys posted, but we're working on it. I feel like, just kind of on that vein, I feel like we're still going to be unpacking this patch when the next one drops. There's just so much going on. I had a, um, I had a really good experience today. I was really frustrated. I was kind of fetching a little bit in, in the, the Discord that we use for our wiki editing staff. And um, several of them and, uh, and, and Little White Mouse kind of gave me a lot of pointers, set me uh, re-examining how I was approaching torpedo drops, particularly in Graf Zeppelin. And um, made a big difference, made a big impact in improving my play. Um, so definitely ask around, guys. There's people out there that have already accrued some of this knowledge. They're not afraid to share it, and uh, and we can all learn from each other and, and try to try to figure this stuff out because it's, whew, it's it's a long road. 
I think the worst the people, the, the big losers in this patch are destroyers. Destroyers are in a really, really bad place right now in the, in the overall meta of the game. Double CV games are everywhere on North America. I hear triple CV games are not abnormal on the EU server. And planes can cycle so fast that a destroyer really, like, you can't even cap. There's just no point. On a domination map, why? Why go up there and just you're just going to get triple teamed or double teamed by rocket planes and blown into oblivion? So right now, the, the patch is a train wreck for destroyers. And I, I, I blew this one, right? I got this wrong because I'm so used to the one CV in a game cap. Um, uh, cap's not the word. Mindset. Um, that... I just, I, it didn't occur to me that, that they were going to open that up uh, to two or even three for a while. And so I was like, oh, destroyers are going to be more valuable because now you're going to need destroyers to spot. You won't have CVs to spot the entire map. Well, early game, CVs still do spot the entire, the entire enemy team very commonly. But when you've got two or three of them in a game, the spotting is quite endless. And it really, really hurts DD's ability to be able to get up and do their job and spot and cap. It's just... Something's gonna have to give here, and I think uh, I think the sooner the better. Uh, otherwise, there's a there's a very high risk we're gonna lose we're gonna lose players permanently. Um, the learning curve overall for the new mechanics is is kind of steep, right? There's the, between the the monstrous flak trying to figure out how to get around it. And it's not just as simple as steering left and right. Um, sometimes you have to learn to time your drops, especially for dive bombers and torpedo bombers, to get that altitude change. That altitude change of, of engaging the attack run will sometimes uh, dodge that next wave of flak. So it gives you a, buys you precious more seconds to get closer to your target. And despite the ability to drop like multiple sets of ordnance from a single squadron, just pushing home one attack out of a fresh squadron, the plane losses out of that sometimes add up to the point that just trying to get another drop out of that squadron is completely, completely unfeasible. Uh, especially since, you know, the AA, that, that constant ticking AA of the medium and the short-range AA representing the smaller caliber weapons that all of these ships mount, so 50 caliber machine guns, for example, uh, that adds up, right? And when you go in with a full squadron, that the little tick damage is spread out over every plane in the whole squadron. The whole squadron can potentially absorb that damage. But as planes break off and go back to the carrier, there's fewer and fewer places for that damage to go, and it simply becomes much, much easier for your the, whatever target you have to, to finish off the, the couple or three remaining planes out of that squadron. So what I think we're going to start to see is, and you're starting to see a lot of this, players going in with for, you know full squadron, single attack run, hit F, back to the carrier, get me a fresh squadron, we're doing this again. Because trying to push home two and three attacks from the same squadron frequently is just not, this is not realistic. But enough about carriers for the moment. There is a whole slew of new test boats we got uh, we got available to us here on the live server. We have a total of 11 ships right now in our ports for testing. We got HMS Exeter, five new British CVs. That's HMS Hermes, Furious, Implacable, Indomitable, and Audacious. Uh, the completely reworked Azuma, we'll get into that in a minute. Revised versions of Yahagi, Nustrashimi, and Leone. And an up-tiered variant of Veribus Unitas, which has moved from Tier 4 to Tier 5. HMS Exeter was easily the ship I was most excited about. I could not wait to take her out this afternoon, and I did. And let me tell you, this ship is a complete troll. In its current format, it is ridiculous. The game you're watching in the background is my third game in Exeter. I almost showed you my first, which was a loss, but very, very closely, and I was just shy of a Kraken. This was a, this particular game turns into a comeback win, and with Exeter's mix of smoke, heel torps, and her eight-inch guns, she just she makes it look easy. Um, the ship is a ton of fun, but she feels just crazy overtuned for tier five. I could really see her at tier six with a few more hit points, maybe in her base pool and this particular mix of AA and and consumables. Uh, wait until you see how many plane kills I end up with this game. Just wait till the end. You're gonna love it. Nusto Shimi has been lightly tweaked. They've changed her torpedoes, but she's overall about the same ship. Going to try that out. Um, she, again, we've talked about this before, probably a bit of a jack-of-all-trades there. Uh, Zoop called her the, the Russian Fletcher. Probably not a bad, uh, a bad analogy, especially now with some faster reloading, harder-hitting torps. They've made radical changes to uh, Leone's main battery. Uh, she's got new shell velocities, new Krupp values on all her shells, and reduced drag coefficients, which should really improve her ballistics. I'm very curious to take her out and try her. Yahagi, they've also had to do some, some changes too. They've tweaked her quite a bit. They've uh, 
messed with her HE shells, and I think changed her torpedo armor around and shortened the reload on it. So I did not play Yahagi last time. This will be my first time taking her out. Universal opinion last time was pretty bleh. Um, so we'll see where she is now. And Veribus Unitas, of course, moving from Tier 4 to Tier 5. Almost all of her stats is tweaked. She's got more health. They've changed her secondary armament and her AA battery accordingly, and so on and so forth. She retains that trolley detection, and uh, I'll try and put some games into her this time around. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't get the chance to uh, last time. The big news that I think came as a shock to everybody was that they've, what they've done to Azuma. Azuma, of course, in her first testing version, was one of the, tier ten, one of the super cruisers, right? A Tier 10 ship. They've dropped her to tier 9, and they've radically reduced her health, they've changed her shell dispersion, uh, slightly increased her reload time, uh, and removed hydrodynamic, uh, hydroacoustic search from her consumable list. So quite a few changes going on there to kind of tweak her, tweak her gameplay. Again, I'm looking forward to trying her out. Her armor scheme uh, holds up better at long range, and, and with she's, if she's going to be more accurate, I feel like now we're starting to find an identity for this ship. So I'm really curious to try her out as well. British TVs, I've put a couple of games in. I tried Furious and uh, Indomitable. The, the level bombers that the British have, rather as opposed to the dive bombers you find on the German, uh, American, and Japanese carriers, they're very comfortable to use once you adapt to the fact that you need a, much start, a start point for the drop run much farther away than you're probably used to playing the other nations. Right now, it feels like British CVs are going to be a really, really good place for new carrier players to learn the mechanics of the class. They have, the planes have a ton of health, and they're just, they're just very, very forgiving. What else has been going on? Erian released this patch. They've come up with a new method of quote-unquote selling her via this de progressive de balloon package in the arsenal. You can eventually shell out the equivalent of amounts to 120 bucks in doubloons and basically be guaranteed an Erian. Or, via the loot crate system that they're offering, you might get one for less than that. It's, uh, it's a bit of an awkward system, and I'm kind of sorry to see them do this, because Irian is... I feel like Irian's a really, really strong ship. She's a ton of fun. Uh, I was hoping that they would just maybe sell her outright, and maybe they will eventually. Right? Maybe, she'll, maybe they'll run this for a while, and then later on she'll come to the store. I don't know. But um, there's a lot of stuff available in those crates. I've got a separate video coming. They gave us some of those to, um, to, to showcase what would happen you know, when we open those up, what kind of stuff we get in them. And uh, I, got, I did that this morning, but I haven't made time to polish the video, so I'll probably try and get that done over the weekend. Rank battles, of course, are live. Um, link down below, more detail on that. And uh, I've got some more thoughts coming on good, uh, good ships in this format. Uh, probably a quick little five-minute video. I'm going to start putting out some little five-minute hit videos every early in the early half of the week. Just you know, five minutes on uh, on one topic or another that I can that I can crank those out pretty quick on Monday evenings. I'm hoping. Uh, other news: registration for War Games Four is finally open. We're, we got this uh, open just this morning uh, here on the North American server. So if you're on the NA server and you're trying to get prepped for King of the Sea, new CVs are live. We all want to know how this is going to work. How are these? How are teams going to adapt these into their strategies? And so that is coming. The tournament is on Saturday, the 9th of February. We're looking at a 3 p.m. Eastern start. Should take us about four hours, maybe a little less, to run through the whole thing. Um, prizing is posted. Uh, the link down below will take you to the tournament registration page if you're interested. Round up a team of guys. Come play. Everybody gets something for showing up. Uh, if you make it to the top two, you get to play a few more games, and you get to, you get some steel for your trouble. Uh, so we got all the prizing posted and all that. Uh, part of that same conversation, we finalized all the prizing for King of the Sea. I can't announce all that yet, but it is, it is ready to go. It all has been approved by Wargaming. Registration for King of the Sea 8 here on North America is probably going to open up in about two weeks. We're, we're targeting the 15th or so of February, somewhere in the middle of February. Maybe the 18th, maybe that Monday. I'm not sure just yet. But keep an eye out. We'll have some more info coming. There's portal articles coming on the main portal for War Games and uh, later on for King of the Sea as well. I want to start something new here on my little weekly thing. There's a ton of content creators out there. Some of them you know. Of course, you know the Zoops and the Mijashes of the world. But maybe there's some other people that you don't know or you're just not as familiar with. And uh, in my various circles, I interact with a lot of different people, whether that's Twitch or CCs. And, and, and they link things and they post. And, and I find all kinds of other guys out there. And I want to, from time to time, I want to highlight somebody that I think is, is worthy of your patronage or your time investing in watching their content. And this week, I want to highlight a guy out of out of the, the UK called Stats Bloke. Stats has been doing. He's got a YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below in the in the video description. 
He's been doing uh, content creation here, uh, YouTube, for uh, a number of weeks. It looks like he kind of got started towards the end of last year doing some update videos and a, lot of, and a lot of voiceover work. He has very, very high production values. His videos look and sound fantastic. Um, he has a stellar voice for doing this kind of work. Makes me kind of wish I could maybe suck him into you know, doing some King of the Sea with me from time to time or something like that. But, but, um, but check him out, guys. Go over, the, go down there and, and watch a couple of videos and see, see what you think. If, that, uh, if that's your bag, uh, you know, subscribe. Throw him a sub. Hell, he's got more subs than I do. And, uh, and, uh, and you know, he's just, he's just doing really good work over there. And I wanted to give him a shout out and, uh, and highlight some, some of the work that he was doing. So we're getting down to the end here of this Exeter game, right? This is this game was just uh, utterly ridiculous. Uh, I started off with my buddy Sneaky Snake in an Exeter uh, across from me. Uh, we ended up he ended up uh, I, get, I got the kill on him earlier on. He was my first kill, and then the game has just we were 400 points down at one point. We've clawed our way back in. We do finally win, um, but this is one of those games that you just look back at and just you just kind of shake your head like, "Oi, we were way down. Team was not doing very well. We stuck with it. We we you know." We finally pulled it out. But honestly, some of that is just due to how ridiculous Exeter is. This particular mix of consumables at Tier 5 is insane. I was chatting with some other people, you know, oh, Tier 5 on a Tier... Uh, heel, heel on a Tier 5 Cruiser just seems so silly. Well, yeah, it kind of is. I mean, Emerald's got a heel, but Emerald will sometimes just evaporate, right? Exeter doesn't so far have this problem. She has similar weak armor, but she's not as fragile. You can't just citadel her from literally any angle the way you can with an emerald. So this turned out to be a very, very good game. And uh, don't be surprised, guys. Uh, Exeter, I have a very, very a strong suspicion that Exeter will not release in this state. They're going to have to do something to tune her down because right now she is just, just crazy. All right, guys, that's it. Appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. Um, we would love to see you sign up for War Games, so drop on by, sign up, come play in the tournament, and um, otherwise, we'll see you guys next week. Take care.